So who is your most profitable uh, age group? Let's say when it comes to you know, top line, bottom line. Between 25 and 35 so far. I think I thought it will be the 35 plus. They do, but they come once every now and then. I understand. They come to buy like one bottle of whiskey that will last for like a couple of months. So the regulars maybe. are like every third day is this 25 to 30. Yes. Hey guys, this is Sir Patel, CEO of London Spirits Competition. We are live from London for the seventh annual London Spirits Competition. I have here Lara Tosato from Amethyst. We're going to talk about, you know, the really what's going on in the main street bottle shops, you know, the neighborhood bottle shops, especially in spirits category and what are the observations, right? So let's start with the, uh, thanks for joining me, by the way. Thank you. As always, you know, appreciate your time. Uh, let's start with the consumer uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things, what are the new questions that are popping up? What are the new kind of consumers walking in? You know, what have you seen that is different than the last, uh, let's say, 24 months? I will definitely say there's maybe a little bit more awareness when it comes, when it comes to spirits. You know, um, there's been a lot of trends recently and uh, a lot of uh, viewpoints that have been changing on the drinks, mm -hmm. the drinks category. They, we, we saw a massive change from uh, study from gin and, and whiskey and vodka, now it's all tequila mezcal forward. Mm -hmm. So um, when you've been drinking these kind of categories for a while and then you start asking questions and you know more or less what you're going towards more to, uh, what you like, and then you start asking yourself why does um, in a shelf full of tequila mezcal, why the same brand has different colors and then it comes out because of, because of aging. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good to, be, to build awareness and it's good to have a chat with customers about which one is good, which one is trending at the moment and mm -hmm. which one are the production is going on a really good direction. Mm -hmm. So let's say you said on the category, you said agave, mezcal for sure, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. Still booming. What about the, the consumer uh, age groups, for example? You know, like I think there is a talk that uh, the, younger, uh, the young drinker is now not drinking much. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's, it's becoming more non-alcoholic, right? Uh, category. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some different age groups uh, that you think completely, all right, now the 25-year-old wants this. Yeah. And you know, if you can throw th two or three examples where completely different things are happening. Okay, I will say um, from 18 to, to 22, so people who are beginning, um, they just start the beginning journey to for, for drink, where did they go, no alcohol or low alcohol? Um, Potentially like flavor spirits, not too much into into whiskey or mm -hmm. wine. I'll say. Mm -hmm. Then probably taste buds are like developing from uh, around twenty five years old until until thirty. That's when you start potentially with um, you. St you're still not gonna leave a bit of vodka and gin, mm -hmm. and especially when you go out, that's usually the go to drink. But then if you had to sip at home, you start with uh, with rum and, uh, rum and whiskey. Mm -hmm. Although now obviously um, a bit of aging on uh, tequila mezcal can also be mm -hmm. good. Um, it's a country that loves tequila mezcal, so 100% they, sh they still wanna go there. And then from 30, around 30 onwards, it's probably gonna be more whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, potentially wine. Mm -hmm. as well, especially when they have to pair it with food, one is always there. Mm -hmm. And potentially from 35 onwards, we start with cognac and armagnac. Mm -hmm. nice. And all the Vs, yeah. So who is your most profitable uh, age group, let's say, when it comes to, you know, top line, bottom line? Uh, between uh, 25 and 35 so far. Um, oh, interesting, I thought it would be the 35 plus. They do, but they come once every now and then. I understand. Um, they come to buy like one bottle of whiskey that will last for like a couple of months. So the regulars maybe. are like every third day is this 25 to 30? Yes. Uh, it's people that have an office job, five o'clock, uh, they leave the office, they go to buy some food for the dinner and they party with wine. Mm. Got it.
That's the that's the main. Got it. Let's let's touch base on this sustainability, right? It's mm -hmm. becoming a broader and broader term. In fact, a lot of things we're including now yeah. in sustainability. As a bottle shop, you know, what are you doing, and what are some ideas that, let's say, if 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 we hired Lara for taking care <laughs> of sustainability, rolling this program out, you know, what are some ideas that you would want to roll out? Uh, well, definitely for sure, focus on products that are uh, that are organic that. Uh, you know, the distillers are looking forward into sustainability and still delivering that good quality product. Mm -hmm. uh, as a shop, uh, we try to be as sustainable as possible. Obviously, we have to adapt with the, with the taste and carrying the classics, which big companies struggle to follow towards mm -hmm. sustainability. But it um, doesn't mean it's, it's bad at the moment. So you're Just doing, like few you, regulations that I mean, will, at some point that we'll have to go through. So basically you're saying products for sure, yeah. but apart from that, what other things, let's say, you uh, as a business are doing? Everybody has to be trained on the products that we hold currently okay. at the shop. So what we do is uh, when a shop open one bottle um, as a sample that we try to share amongst everybody so we don't have to open like 10,000 bottles. Obviously, we um, do a lot of recycling. Uh, all the boxes where we get our bottles delivered on, on a daily basis, then they go back to the warehouse mm -hmm. um, and they get recycled all together mm -hmm. from all the shops. Mm -hmm. And less, less waste in general, um, especially like on paper waste, we try to print less. We try to be... Uh, more present on uh, social media mm -hmm. and uh, documentation and everything um, everything has to be on uh, online as well on, mm -hmm. on a cloud so that's um, baby steps mm. you know local buying or local relationships versus international mm -hmm. right uh, are, are you seeing that that is happening or are are we buying more locally you know supporting more local brands or it's still the, the I mean we can be business right yeah so it's still the bottom line and the profit 100% I believe it depends on the sort of neighborhood you are um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, test different shops in different areas of London and there are places like North London or West London for example that uh, they like local stuff they appreciate local things and they try to stick with it. Mm. Every now and then they try to like something new, but they try to stick with um, local, especially if it's new, mm. um, things that are familiar with, with them already. True, I think that's a good point. I think you've got to adapt to the consumer, right? That's 100%. how you will yeah. sort of actually be forced yeah. to do it. Yeah.